wing of the Air National Guard takes to the air to demonstrate in action its efficiency and ability to defend your home. Santa Rosa Air National Guard base, the wing displays its might for the civic leaders of the city of Santa Rosa. Brigadier General Leonard E. Thomas, commanding general of the 146th Composite Wing of the Air National Guard, welcomes the distinguished visitors to the base and demonstrates the intricacies of operation of the F-80 Shooting Star. A permanent force of specialists is employed by the Air National Guard to perform maintenance and supply functions necessary to keep equipment operational at all times. These specialists, both officers and enlisted personnel, check with the pilot on operational efficiency. The instruction of the ground personnel is intensive and thorough. Actual practice in repair and maintenance is given the Air Guardsman, which is designed to develop skill. For example, the ground crew chief has been told by the pilot of this plane that there was a shimmy in one of the wheels which he noticed upon landing. In addition to the regular after-flight checkup, the wheel has been given special attention for on-the-ground immediate repair. This quick, efficient, practical experience gives the members of the Air National Guard an opportunity to learn firsthand and work with the latest types of aircraft and equipment. The Air Guard's combat seasoned officer and non-commissioned officer instructors train him in the use of the finest and newest equipment. Air Force personnel are on hand full time to supervise the training, inspect it, and see that it meets the same high standards prescribed for the regular services. On the job training at the Air Base and actual experience in the field enables the Air Guardsmen to meet the same requirements for advancement prescribed for members of the Air Force. Here is the importance of the ground crew. It takes many men working in their specialized fields of mechanical and technical efficiency to place one man on a movable gun platform in the air, the pilot of each fighter plane and crew of each bomber. Behind the pilot of every plane is teamwork, the ground crew who see to the proper operation of the aircraft and engine, that the fuel and oxygen tanks are fully serviced, and all combat equipment is functioning properly. And here's the famous F-80 Shooting Star flown by members of the 196th Fighter Squadron from San Bernardino. With everything ready and briefing completed, the pilots prepare themselves for their mission. The ground crews have completed their last minute checking and they stand by for the final signals from the pilots before leaving the field clear for the start of operations. This is it. It is more than a mere tactical exercise, for many of these young pilots are going on their first mission. Here is the chance many of them have been waiting and studying for. As they prepare to take off, the tower transmits further instructions in clearing each aircraft for takeoff. Though so when a plane takes off, it might soon be out of sight. The interest of the crew goes with it. The cooperation, effort, and pride of accomplishment. A job well done. Leaves each man rooting for his own particular plane. To the ground crew, though he works on many planes, there's always one that he regards as his own, favoring it, nursing it to the best that it can perform. And as they taxi into position, each looks to his favorite to give the desired performance.
146 fighter group taxis out onto the runway, the group commander watches his pilots in planes as they prepare to take off. The operations officer checks each pilot and his order of takeoff. The frontline defenders of California's war industries, the 146 composite wing, is a typical on-call fighter outfit of the Air National Guard. These Air Guard units will merge with the regular Air Force on end day, teamed for defense. From the control tower, the efficiently operated system of the field's traffic is observed and studied, constantly on watch for new methods of improvement. Flying these F-51 Mustangs, the 195th Fighter Squadron from Van Nuys won the coveted and much sought for General Carl Tui Spots Award for 1950. A good pilot and his ground crew never take any chances. Being a good pilot and a good crewman is a matter of constant flying, constant practice, working and improving mechanical operation, and thoroughly knowing their plane. The primary objective of all fighter organizations is to prepare each unit to conduct aerial warfare by raising the administrative and operational efficiency of the unit to the highest possible degree, with emphasis being placed on fighter tactics and aerial gunnery. The secondary objective for fighter units is participation in exercises such as this prepared by wing headquarters. The ground crewman completes his part of the work and helps his pilot to adjust his parachute and makes a final checkup of instruments and oxygen before he leaves the field. the scramble takeoff, they lose no time in taxiing to the downwind end of the runway to park and await the signal to become airborne and intercept the enemy. participating in this exercise. One of the most exciting planes in the eyes of the American people is the jet. It's a source of wonder and a challenge to spot. When its roar is heard in the air, the plane itself is practically out of sight, traveling near the speed of sound. These men who fly the jet are trained in all types of aircraft, but they too regard them with great respect. The initiation of any big bombing mission entails a great deal of preparation. Those in the Air National Guard who are specializing in meteorology make the preliminary studies of air pressures, wind drift, and possible altitudes. 
The weather technician gives the psychrometer to an assistant who is specializing in meteorology and supervises him in the use of the instrument by swinging it to obtain the dew point. The weathermen of the wing send up a hydrogen-filled balloon to check on wind direction for the information of the bombing missions. The chief observer watches the operations of the technicians and the balloon. The men on the theodolite follow the flight of the balloon into the sky, checking carefully the wind speed and direction, both vertical motions, updrafts and downdrafts, and horizontal motions, inflow, outflow, vorticity, and observing the general turbulence or gustiness that might be encountered by a plane in the air. On the plotting board, another weather technician correlates all of this information, ceiling, type of cloud formation, dew point, temperature and pressures on the ground as well as in the air. This being a first order weather station, it is placed on the teletype and transmitted to other stations in the United States. This station likewise receives similar information which is included in the plotting. Storms and cold and extremes of heat can seriously hinder many kinds of military operations. Every commander of an air group must make the fullest allowance for the effective weather on the maneuvers he proposes. This can be in a peacetime mock battle or in a serious wartime mission. The pilots here are being briefed as to what they can expect after taking off. And study topographical maps showing the area of their bombing and intercepting operations. Now let's go on a bombing mission with 115th Bombardment Squadron and be bombardier observers in the nose of a B-26. The fueling is completed and all instruments are checked. When the pilot puts his gear in the nose and the rest of the crew, the navigator and gunner climb aboard, we're ready to take off. We receive the okay to take off from the operations officer, radio telephoning our navigator. To photographers on aerial missions, an airplane is just a flying tripod. However, sitting on the floor behind the mounted camera is not easy, especially when a tight maneuver is needed to hold the subject in view. As we see the ground rushing beneath us, we're observed by the operations officer, checking our rise in flight, making sure that our landing gear is up and that we're safely airborne. On the way to the target range, the pilot and navigator check the working of the motors and study the terrain over which they're flying and compare it with the maps which have been given them in the briefing. As we approach our objective, all the members of the crew are alerted. This is a testing point. The skill of the pilot, the accuracy of the navigator, and our cameraman is ready to film the rapidly moving action to record the successful operation of the bombing of the target. After seeing the first of the bombs, which with pinpoint accuracy have reached their objective, a simulated strategic defense plan, we return to formation. As each of the planes completes its mission according to the prior instructions, we take a last look and start back to the base. Each pilot knows his place in the various groupings, and these orders are very carefully followed. The lead pilot setting the speed and direction the wingmen protecting the flight. And now a word about the Engineer Aviation Battalion, the men who construct the airstrip. Using heavy equipment, they're learning airfield construction and helping to provide much needed facilities.
With the bombing mission completed, a job well done, the pilot reports to operations on the result of his flight. And the fighter pilots? Good shooting? I should say so. The ground crewmen inspect the sleeve to determine which flight had the best marksmanship. Airmen of the 146th Composite Wing, under the command of Brigadier General Leonard E. Thomas, stand at attention to receive their guests of honor. The Joint Commanders-in-Chief, Governor Earl Warren of California, and Governor Danny Garvey of Arizona, approach the men who are to receive decorations. Major General Curtis D. O'Sullivan, Adjutant General of California, makes presentation of Medals of Merit to Brigadier General Lawrence C. Ames for exceptional service as Commanding General of the 61st Fighter Wing. Brigadier General Floyd W. Stewart makes presentation of California Service Medals to Colonel Clarence A. Shoup and Lieutenant Colonel Earl H. Robinson. Governor Earl Warren presents a California Medal of Merit to Major General Alexander M. Tuthill, Adjutant General of Arizona. General Tuthill, as a practicing physician, enlisted in Troop D Cavalry, California National Guard in 1897. In review are the following units. The 562nd Air National Guard Band. Headquarter Squadron, 146 Composite Wing. The 146 Fighter Group. The 195th Fighter Squadron. The 196th Fighter Squadron. Fighter Squadron, the 115th Light Bombardment Squadron, 246 Air Service Group, 1905th Engineer Aviation Battalion, 